Anand Singh is someone who fits the description of the Chinese fire rooster to perfection and Michelle got the opportunity to experience his world for a day. With over 80 films to his credit, Anand Singh is a major producer on an international scale. His career took off in 1984 when he produced Place of Weeping with director Daryl Root, which was the first anti-apartheid drama of its kind to be filmed entirely in South Africa. He went on to bring us movies as diverse as Serafina, Mama Jack, I Capture the Castle, Yesterday, The First Grader, Red Dust and Cry the Beloved Country to the Screen. And A Long Walk to Freedom not only won a string of prestigious awards but was also the fulfillment of a personal dream. It's a career with too many highlights to mention. Michel met Anand at his corporate headquarters in Durban. Very few people under the age of 30 will probably have any inkling of what 8mm film looks like. And yet, I don't think Anand will ever forget it. Those strips of celluloid recall how a father inspired a son and inspired such greatness. Anand grew up as the son of a doctor. His father died when Anand was only 13. But he had already passed on a profound sense of social justice and political awareness. It was this and a shared passion for the movies that inspired him to enter the film industry. And by 1984, he had his first feature on the international circuit. Mr. Singh, welcome to Mela. Great to be here. Now, in many ways, you are the face of the film industry in South Africa. Where did your love of film start? When I grew up, um, there was no television, um, as South Africans only got to have television in 1976. So I would watch uh, at home. My dad would bring, him, bring in 8mm silent movies uh, that um, we watched um, uh, Charlie Chaplin and uh, Laurel and Hardy. And as an eight-year-old, I was captivated by the ability for a character like Charlie Chaplin to just mesmerize us with his antics. And these were little movies on a tiny, not even a screen, on the wall. Uh, and uh, we were laughing and enjoying every moment. And I thought, wow, this is quite amazing. So that's kind of, I think, where it started. As a teenager, I started working uh, for a rand a day uh, rewinding films um, um, in a store and um, again it was just to be able to get these films, take them home and watch them because I couldn't afford to rent them. Your father passed away when you were barely a teenager. Beyond your love of film, what influence did he have on you? Well, you know, I think the, the introduction to film, to photographs, um, he used to take movies on 8mm um, so we would watch those moving images of ourselves and um, um, I think that introduction uh, was also helpful because uh, I got to see how to take pictures. In 1995, Anand produced a new screen version of Alan Payton's Cry the Beloved Country, starring James Earl Jones, Richard Harris, Dolly Roteba and Charles S. Dutton. The film received international acclaim, helping to pave the way for his dream project, the life story of Madiba. I decided I wanted to make that film post-apartheid, uh, or at least when Madiba was released. So, you know, they're kind of important stories in South Africa, and I think the other important thing is that these are timeless stories. Uh, Sarafina, um, Red Dust, in 20, 50 years' time, someone will be watching it on Sun Technology. Anand has also produced highly acclaimed documentaries covering a reunion of Robben Island prisoners, Barack Obama's presidential campaign, South Africa's first democratic elections and, of course, the life of Nelson Mandela. You formed a very special bond with Madiba. What was that experience like? We've been very fortunate to have him as a friend and to be able to interact with him on a personal basis. My first meeting with him was two weeks after he came out of prison. He mentioned to me that he had written Long Walk to Freedom and um, in prison and that, um, you know, I wanted to make the movie and I was writing to him while he was in prison about that. This movie spent many years in development. What was the process like and some of the challenges that you faced? The huge responsibility of doing it right was the first thing. But most challenging was the fact that he has had an amazing life and to try and make a two-hour film out of this amazing life was the big task. Movie production often involves recreating the reality of the past and present. But Anand also has an ambitious vision for the future of the film industry in South Africa. 
He has already helped establish Cape Town as a movie-making destination and has big plans for Durban. Where would you like to see the South African film industry in the next five or ten years? If I look back over the past five to ten years, the industry has progressed really well. It's very refreshing to see uh, great young talents coming out, um, you know, making movies, making movies that are non-political, not, nothing to do with apartheid. And I think that's going to continue because lots of uh, young people feel this is a very uh, exciting industry. And as a function of that, um, you know, you'll have a lot of people getting involved. There are film schools around now, and hopefully more and more uh, creative talents will come out of that. But it is hard. There's a lot of rejection, and the best will thrive. Like actors and directors, some producers either specialize or become typecast in particular movie genres. But this just isn't the case with Anand Singh. His projects cover the full spectrum of entertainment from romance and fantasy to drama, tragedy and comedy, while always showing one common factor. An Anand Singh production is always centered on people, and it's the human dimension that draws in the audience.